how's it going everyone gbg here and in today's video i'm bringing to you a veiled arts council guide that will essentially help you get better with the combat of rise of the ronin so in a nutshell it's going to help you flow between each stances all three stances, without going so much into blade flash which is your key well your blood cleansing attack or sheathing or whatever what have you um to regain your key which breaks the flow of combat of course of course because there's a pause and also violent gale which is your stance switching attack or pressure attack that also kind of regains key but at the same time it's breaking the flow of combat it's breaking that that fluidity in the combat which you have as you can see right now if we were to compare this what i'm doing right now to doing changing again and then doing another skill changing again to this what i'm about to do right now as you can see the difference is huge so without further ado let's learn how we do all that but first, let me give you an overview of my skills, what exactly do I use, and all of the different synergy skills that I think work really well together. So, for my stances, I'm using the Jig and Ryu for my left side of my screen. So like when I press R1, which is the interact button, into changing your stance to the left side, that's what you're gonna see, Jig and Ryu. For my low stance, I use Tatsumi Ryu, and then for GK Ryu, it's gonna be on my right side, on the right stance. And then for my dual blades, I use Mumio Kishin. Uh, I can't really spoil it for you, but uh, you're gonna have to end the game to get this. And then for my low stance, I have Tenen Rishin Ryu, which is really a high stance, but it does not matter. I use it anyway because it's effective for my combat style. And then Niten Ichin Ryu because it just looks so dope when you attack. And it's one of my favorite stances as well. These two, actually all three of these, I cannot leave without them. I cannot live without them. They really just work really well together. Shuriken is a must equip on your character. Don't be silly. Don't be using guns. Shuriken is a must have in your, in your arsenal, okay? Recovers your key really nice. So does guns too, but Shuriken just, you evade really well with this. And it's quick, it comes out fast. I mean, you could just be attacking at any point. You can just go, you know, you can just attack and then run. Same with the guns as well, but the guns just aren't, they just don't give you that iframe that the shuriken does, okay? It's not as effective. I wouldn't say anyway, personally. I find it that I get away with more silly nonsense with shurikens than I do with guns, okay? All right, and as for my equipment, I'm focusing on fortune for now just to get some better stats. So it's nothing really special for now, all right? And then let's head over to controls. And for my controls, I'm using custom one, which I think, I believe it's something similar to the, the one we had in Neo. So I'm just gonna skim through this so you guys can see the exact uh, same inputs. You guys wanna copy that. There you go, all of the same, all right? So, and then uh, for my camera, so you lock on and all that nonsense. Everything is maxed out, including, you know, aim speed because I like to be fast. And no camera assist because, <laughs> because okay, we, we can't be noobs if we're using this, <laughs> this amount of speed on your camera. And as for, as for uh, aim, I mean, lock on, this is what we have. Automatic lock on when you attack people, yes. Turn this on because it's good okay this is good when you attack the nearest enemy you need to be locked onto them all right it's actually good to have unless you don't want it but for me it actually does work sometimes i switch it off as you can see i had it off but it just depends on what mission i'm going to take on but for the time being just switch it on play with it if you don't like it turn it off all right auto lock on on counter sparks yes sir you want to punish the enemy you just parrot especially if it's a critical attack you want to do that and an automatic lock on after defeating an enemy mm, yes because it switches on to the nearest foe that's attacking you it could be an archer which i detest so go ahead and do that and then this is really good actually because whenever you press the uh the analog stick um it like it just switches to the nearest enemy okay so it's just just have it on 
to the nearest enemy. And if you don't like that version, then switch it to your liking. Play around with the setting. That's all I can say, just play with it. And this, in a nutshell, it just allows you to move your left analog stick. So let's say you're, you're targeting this guy right here. For example, let's just take the wood as an example, right? This is my nearest enemy. If I press, if I'm locked onto him, well, the, the wood, if I'm locked onto him, I'm gonna just attack this way. What that setting does allows us to do is to be able to attack backwards, but still focused on the enemy in front of us, okay? So the enemy could still be focused on and locked onto it. Like our marker could still be locked onto this guy right here. Let's just pretend this is a foe. But we're still able to move our unlock to the side, to our enemies that are on the sides, backwards, diagonal, or what have you, you know? So it's good to have that setting on. And that's about it really, because after that, we are going to get into none of this stuff I have on, by the way. Everything except auto collect items, which is really good. And then the vibrations is, is completely up to you guys, all right? Okay, man, that's it. Let's get into the actual technical stuff now. Starting off, we need to understand how key recovery works, AKA blade flash. And in order for you to know how this all works, you're gonna need an enemy. So let me just pick up these two enemies right here. They're not enemies, they're police officers, but who cares, right? So what we're gonna do, we just pay attention to my key position. Here we go, look at this. I'm gonna attack just randomly. And then when I press R1, after I attack once more, it doesn't matter if actually I don't attack at all. So right here, I'm just gonna deplete my stamina. Hold on, let me just deplete my stamina, I don't want to fight him. And I press R1. The reason why I recovered so much key is because the amount of blood I had accumulated prior, okay? So, as you can see, the more you hit him and the more blood you have on your weapon, the more key you will recover. So that is called Blade Flash, alright? And this is important because this is what's going to allow us to change stances fluidly without going into Violent Gale and Flash Attack. That is Flash Attack, which switches weapon, and Violent Gale. You stay with the same weapon, but you change stance, okay, to another one. So from Chi stance, for example, from Jigen Ryu to Tatsumi Ryu, then if you, if you were to change from this stance to another, to this stance, then that would be called your... Uh, violent Gale, but if you were to change stance from, for example, Jigen Ryu to whatever you had previously on your dual swords, uh, for, for now, for example, it's going to be Niten Ichi Ryu, then that would be called your flash attack. All right. So those are the two things that you're going to need to understand how it all works. Okay. Also, remember, the more damage you deal to your opponent and the more blood you have accumulated on your weapon then the more key you will recover. And that is why I have set my build to have a lot of blood gauge up. So whenever I hit my opponents, and uh, as you can see, both weapons have it. And also the stats that you can accumulate to increase the amount of blood that you gain, okay? All very important for you to know um, for this specific guide, all right? Okay, moving on. Now that we know how it all works, Violent Gale and uh, Flash Attack both can be executed by simply pressing Weapon Switch or changing stance after a certain amount of combos or whatever hit really you do. So Flash Attack after any hit, after any hit could be one, two, three, or even one, you can change the weapon and the heal will take you into Flash Attack. And then Violent Gale is just, doesn't matter how many hits I do, if I just do, and you can keep doing this by the way, you can keep changing stance if you want just keep on doing this if you want to do that and this will continuously recover key up to 50 percent especially if you have accumulated a little bit of more blood on that as well okay matter of fact let's test it out and see how it works on enemies if i keep doing it will i recover key because i'm not actually sure about it let's test it out Yep, we recovered a lot of blood there. I mean, a lot of key there. And uh, it seems this this thing is real. You can actually use this pretty well if you want to keep pressure as well as just recover the entire key gauge if you want. But um, 
I wouldn't suggest using this against big bosses or anyone with super armor because, bro, they will just wreck you. Alright, moving on. So the reason why I was saying it's important for us to know how to use Violent Gale and um, Flash Attack is because you need to keep Pulse from the Violent Gale, which is basically that, right? So before Violent Gale comes out. So for example, if I switch stance after I attack, you know, and you're going to need to do certain attacks that have like a little longer animation. So you can't just go one attack and then try and do something else. Well, I can because I'm fast. I, can, I know how to do it. So I can go and then go into my other stance without having to worry about going into Violent Gale, which you just saw, right? So I can be on this stance, go into this, and then go into that. You see, I can do... I can keep on going if I wanted to, but it's just a demonstration for you to know that it is possible to do it if you're fast with your fingers. Uh, but for the time being, we want to make sure we just break it down to the bare minimum. So what you're going to want to do is familiarize yourself with your weapon skills and attacks and frames. Okay, It's very important for you to know exactly when the animation ends, when it starts, so that you know when Violent Gale triggers after you switch stance. So for example, if I go right that and then change stance, the soon I mean the quicker I change stance, the more time I have to execute my next skill on the on the stance that you're switching to. For example, I'm gonna try and, and switch to this stance to GK or IU and then use this, right? Which I always do because it allows me to either close in on my enemy or back out, you know? So I'm gonna do one hit or maybe even two and then immediately switch to Kike Ryu and do uh, uh, what's that move called again it doesn't matter that shuriken throw okay and that's not your normal shuriken throw by the way this is what a normal shuriken throw looks like that's the skill all right okay so I'm gonna do two and then switch dance and as you can see because I was too slow it did violent kill okay but if I'm quite um, if I'm quick enough Try it again. So what you have to do, you have to change stance the minute the second animation comes out. So one, two, ch change stance, and then immediately activate the skill on your other stance. Sounds simple, but it takes a lot of getting used to. Okay, so one, two, change stance, and use it. All right, and you can keep going, and you can even come back to the next stance or to previous stance that you were in. So this is where it gets tricky, right? This is where it gets really tricky. So if you were to do, oh my goodness, if you were to do one, two, change stance, and then use this, change back, and then use another skill, for example, that one, then it starts to get super tricky. So one, two, change stance. Oh, I, even I get confused still. But let me try and get it done so you guys can see exactly what I mean. All right, so here we go. We go two, change stance, into that. See how fluid that all looked like? Instead of you doing one, two, change stance, violent gale, one attack, change stance, violent gale, and then you go into this. Do you see how less attractive that looks compared to what you're doing here? See what I mean? Do you see how much more attractive that combo looks compared to what we just did earlier? So Team Ninja actually does not teach you that at all. Like this is something that I figured out myself that I'm sharing with you because it is important that we keep the combo fluidity going. So that is literally how it works. You're gonna wanna know exactly what frames you have and this works with every single weapon by the way. It's not just a katana, every single weapon. And it works so long as you know exactly when your animation is gonna end. So for example, I'm gonna do this move charge the attack and then I'm gonna try and change stance and immediately use this it is tricky because when you charge your attack and then let go you gotta be able to know exactly the second the frame uh, is released so you can change stance immediately use the other skill because you have a frame and a time gap in which you have to input that skill uh, you gotta go gotta go change stance boom just like so do you see how complicated it gets the more creative we get so if you want to do stuff like that you're really gonna need to study your your stances and know exactly when each and every single uh, animation ends for your combo attacks you can do it for this one for example you can do it for this one and then immediately change stance and do uh, 
uh, the Geeky Ryu one, like that. Oh, I can even go to this one. Uh, it's dance here. So I'm gonna do R1 and X. This is what it looks like. R1 and X. Okay, but what I normally do, I do one hit only. And then st change stance to Geeky Ryu. Use this. Basically, that's what I always do. So I do one hit. Geeky Ryu straight away. So I go. Oh my goodness. It is quick because this animation is super quick. So depending on your animation. There you go. Depending on the animation that you're currently using, like I said earlier, you need to really know how the animations work. Uh, that's how fast you're gonna need to input your your uh, stance switch into uh, Blade Flash. So, <laughs> Jesus, Blade Flash. Um, so we'll, let me just break it down one more time for you guys. So, first of all, you're gonna do an attack. Doesn't matter what attack it is. Could be even this one. It could be that one as well. So you could do change stance, kick your right. You see, it doesn't matter what attack it is. Could be anything. All right. All right, so just for the time being, for now, for this, for the purpose of this tutorial, you're gonna want to do a single attack. Make sure that attack has like a a long period frame, you know, like attack attack animation. You want it to have the longest attack animation. For example, I think the the easiest one for me to showcase it with you guys actually for this weapon that I am currently using is this one that one is actually really good because you can do it and then change stance actually no it's not never mind forget that one um <laughs> i just tried it and it wasn't oh okay yeah it's this one here so that skill is called you might have it i don't know if you guys have the weapon i currently have equipped on but um i think it's called autumn current yeah this one right here so as you can see i got it right all that animation all that time that you have you can switch stance the minute you use it just switch stance and you see you had all that time to input another skill on this dance on jiken ryu so i can go boom and then immediately into this so what i did i used uh, autumn current which is r1 circle and then change stance into and make sure you let go of r1 as well when you're doing this so you press okay so you listen to this you're gonna press r1 in circle change stance okay and let go of r1 because you can't do you can't do this basically you can't do r1 circle change stance r1 x it does not work you have to let go because you need to keep pulse all right or you need to do oh my god the name the name is not sticking to me boys i'm so sorry blade flash <sighs> you need to blade flash all right and blade flash is when you press r1 Basically, I'm just gonna say key pulse for the purpose of this video because you guys understand what it means, right? Any Neo fan that's playing this game knows exactly what I mean. Uh, Blade Flash or key pulse is, this, is, the, is the name, all right? So you do Autumn Current and immediately change stance. So Autumn Current, change stance, and then you're gonna do Blade Flash or key pulse into any other move on your, on your weapon. So here we go. I'm just gonna cancel it. I'm not gonna use a single move, okay? So I'm gonna do uh, Autumn Current, cancel. See? I, was, I didn't do a move, but I canceled the animation of the Violent Gale. There was no Violent Gale on this one. Otherwise, this is what would have happened, okay? This right here, if I didn't cancel it. But because I did, oh, sorry, my bad. I got that animation instead, and my guy is just standing there, and you can actually you know, you can actually parry, block, move away if, if it's too dangerous to even like approach the enemy. Because Violent Gale, you cannot cancel it. Once you go into it, that's it. You know, you cannot cancel it. As you can see, it takes uh, a few a few frames for you to be able to move out from Violent Gale. So here we go again, just to, for the purpose of this video. As you can see, I cannot move, I cannot do anything. This is why this tech is very crucial. It is very important that you know exactly how it works, okay? Once again, we do autumn current and then immediately change stance. So I'm gonna do boom, change stance. Now faster. Oh, my bad, my bad. Here we go. And I had all that time to keep pulse and then use my other skill on the other on the other stance. Okay, and again, autumn current, keep pulse, use another move. All right. Again, autumn current, keep pulse, use another move. You can do it even slower actually. Autumn current, keep pulse. Oh. Not that slow. Like that. And again, autumn current, key pulse, this one. Or autumn current, key pulse, into shadow. Or autumn current, key pulse, into uh, that move right there. Alright? 
So I hope you guys understood how this works because that is basically how I be doing my combos. And uh, yeah, that, that's basically it. That's all that's gonna allow you to move fl more fluidly in the game and become way more stylish. It opens a lot of doors. So your creativity is what's gonna push you to the next level, okay? For me, uh, my imagination is just so vast because I always be making combos in video games. Doesn't matter the game that I play, I always be making combos, so I'm very creative. I also play MMOs, so I always get uh, super uh, <laughs> creative with my with my combos. All right. Um, so yeah, man. Now I'm gonna show you how to um, change weapon fluidly without going into violent violent gale, and this is where the shuriken comes in. Okay, for the violent well, not violent gale. This one is flash attack. To cancel out the animation on the flash attack, what you're gonna wanna do is like again same procedure you do one attack or two it doesn't matter Sh throw a shuriken and then change stance this will cancel out the animation on the violent kill i mean on the flash attack for the for the other weapon okay and it looks a lot better when you do it properly by the way you can do this for example like that or you can do um slightly better actually i think there is a oh, here we go you do this then you throw your shuriken and then if i leave my stance here for my other weapon actually i can go straight into this then it'll look better all right so you do yeah i need to be on point with it you have to be super precise and again you need to know exactly when the animation ends like that and you can't hold r1 you can't just hold r1 and pretend you you're gonna change stance as you can see or i can go you can even change stance after you come into the second weapon. So for example, you can go like that, change stance, and then use your skill. For example, yeah? It has to be on point. Everything has to be on point. So let's, for example, let me just be on this one. Here we go. Yeah? This is how you change stance without you going into flash attack. So shuriken, and you know the rest. Change weapon use the skill or shuriken change weapon change stance and then key pulse and use the other skill okay all right so i think i did say that you shouldn't hold r1 because it will interrupt you or mess you up and it is right i thought that perhaps you you may be able to but if you do hold r1 sometimes it just doesn't work because you know you end up pressing the shuriken like right now I'm mashing L2 to throw the shuriken it's not working so it just, you shouldn't hold out one at all after you do it so you should always press it time it just make sure you time everything you do okay the more you time things the better you'll get the better your combo fluidity will look like as well so it'll just look better that way when you do it all the time base and precision and size and all that nonsense okay it looks better that way so here we go i'm gonna change stance as well uh, there you go very beautiful very fluid <laughs> and there you have it and you can go back to the next stance again you could actually go back to your other stance and you can just keep switching in between each weapon as you can see you can just keep switching weapons and look super fluid so long as you time everything right so there you have it that is how you swap stances and that is essentially what's gonna help you look a lot more fluid when you're playing this game and i hope i explained that right and if there's anything you don't understand at all i will be writing in the description down below how it all works regardless um if i spoke it the wrong way or anything as such so hopefully that helps this video helps you and as promised i did say i was gonna drop a katana master combo and uh tutorial so there you have it this is essentially not even a, a katana master guide it is a weapon master guide because you will be mastering your weapon once you know exactly how to cancel your movesets and animations so hopefully this helps guys do not listen to reviewers they do not know shiza 
they don't know Shiza, they just play the game for about two hours, let it leave it to dust, and they don't really explore the entire depth that the mechanics offer to you. But that's my job, that's fine, I'll do it. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, make sure to subscribe, let everybody know Game Breaker God is a real veiled edge. And uh, yeah, you'll make my day. <laughs> Love you guys, take care. And uh, yeah, see you soon from your boy Sensei GBG. Oh, my God.